Hey y'all, we have had a lot of rain in the past week or so, probably about um, close to five inches. Um, and so we have a big money mess out here, but it's finally time for a full garden tour. So you'll see a lot of water <laughs> puddles around our yard, but that is gonna be the site for some future rain gardens because I can just see all the potential even with the mud. So let's get started. We'll do a full end of March garden tour around our whole front yard. Look out there, since we've had so much rain and mud, the ducks are coming to visit us. <laughs> These are just some wild ducks that have started coming around with all this rain that we've had. <laughs> so let's just start right over here. These are some plants on the porch here that I still need to get potted up. So I wanted to get this garden tour filmed so that I can get to work on getting all these things done. This down here, this one is a stevia plant. I'm not sure how the flowers look, but the leaves are super, super, super sweet as you can imagine. It's my first time growing stevia and I, I sowed five seeds in total um, in the fall, and this is the only plant that I have at the moment. I have a few more seeds left, so I'll probably try again to get this one growing. These are the Cosmos. They're looking really good. You can see some, some little blooms, some little blossoms coming up on here. And actually, there's some ants. That might be killing off that. That's interesting. These are some sweet alyssums here, and this is moringa tree. These are some mystery brassicas. I'm really not sure what those are. Those are some chrysanthemums, I believe. This one is chamomile. Check out those little flowers. Can't wait for that to get bigger. These are some more mystery brassicas. Let's check out how the tomatoes are doing. They're still there. I think they're about as big as those two are going to get, so we'll see if they can ripen up. I have a lot of flowers. And check out this borage. These are the ones that you saw me transplant. Look at these flowers, how beautiful. Isn't that a unique plant? These are the onions. And that borage is gonna flower also. These tomatoes are looking really good. This is the lettuce leaf basil. It's not liking all that rain that we're getting. It's getting these little black spots on it. Basil doesn't like that much moisture, but it might be okay. And if not, I have some more seeds. Look at these, how interesting. These popped up as volunteers from the compost that I put down because I had threw some watermelons and um, I had watermelon vine and I had some little pumpkins that I threw in there to compost and looks like the seeds sprouted. So we'll let those grow a little bit and then I'm gonna transplant them into a different area. Look at the ducks. Hi ducks. <laughs> These are the African daisies. I can't believe this tag is fading. I don't know if this is a new tag. That must be an old tag with the old marker. These are African daisies and they look like they might, yeah, they're starting to put out some little, little blooms there. The sweet alyssum are doing so good. They're so cute. These are all the climbing beans, the pole beans. They're starting to make their little tendrils. Look at those ducks. Hey, I think they think I have some food for them. Y'all are welcome to come eat all the slugs and snails that are eating up my strawberries. Come on. Oh, that one's brave. Come on, come on. Hey, little brave duck. Hey, come on. 
I don't have any food for you, but you could come. Come on. Come on. Y'all look cute. <laughs> I don't have any food for them. Look at the cucumbers. We're getting flowers on the cucumbers. Very nice. The sweet alyssum here is, is looking really pretty. The marigolds are blooming. And this is that one lone cosmos here that was stuck in with the marigolds. I just left it. These are lemon balm here. And these are some of my leftover squashes. I, I didn't want to get rid of them. So I just planted them where I had a spot. So those are my leftover squashes. These are the sages. These are looking really nice. And check out the tomatillos. Look at those flowers. Might even be starting to get some little fruit set on those. Isn't that cute? That's a unique flower as well. This is a dill and some celery. This is the red stalk celery. That's this, this is the celery here that I, this was a, um, a replant from the store. I just cut the celery off the base and stuck the base in the dirt. And this is what you get. So that looks really good. This is a really interesting green here. This is like a wasabi um, mustard green maybe? Or wasabi, some type of brassica, wasabi flavored. <laughs> when I tasted it, I, it came in a mix, so I didn't know exactly what it was, but these fringy leaves had me intrigued. And when I tasted it, it tastes just like wasabi. So look at that. Use that when you want some spice on your dish. <laughs> My cabbages here are finally starting to make little heads in there, finally. I planted those October 4th. I admit I did not fertilize them well, so that's probably why they're so late. This is the New Zealand spinach that's come back. It's doing pretty good. Let me show you this. This is my Rose of Sharon. It's an Althea. It's a lilac, lilac purple color. I'm so excited to see all of this growth on here. These, when we, when we were first tearing out this the flower bed that was here originally, they were planted all the way out by the house right here. And I had to dig them up and I had to prune them really, really hard to get them moved. And I was worried that I was gonna kill it. But you can see it survived, it even survived our weather, and it's making some really nice new growth. So these are gonna be so pretty, I'm so glad. And look, the other one on the other side, right over there, it's looking beautiful too. These are an assortment of amaryllis and daylilies and some other bulbs. I'm so excited, I haven't seen these bloom before. And look at this one, look at this amaryllis. Isn't that beautiful? Can't wait till all of these are in bloom. This is one of my rose bushes. I didn't get a chance to do a hard prune in February, so I'm just gonna let it grow this year and we'll do a hard prune next February. I wanted to show you this though. This is so exciting. Look right down here at this little growth here. This is the balloon flower. These were so cute last year. They survived our freeze and all that ice. So I'm so excited to see that. They're gonna be beautiful. This is a clump of daylilies here. Oh, and you can also see Penelope helped me put some seeds down. Right there, that's bachelor's buttons. I have a bunch of these popping up because we just put a whole packet of seed all the way down. This is an okra I planted. I just put a seed down just to see. And this is guara, this plant here. It's gonna make some really beautiful pink flowers. This one is my globe artichoke. Let's 
see. Well, I just put artichoke on there. I only have one type of seed. I think this is the globe artichoke. And these are the wild violets from here. This is the bloody dock sorrel and red malabar spinach. This is one of my Katrina roses, the Peggy Martin rose. I'm going to be training this one to go all the way up this trellis. I have one on each side. Come back around this way. These kohlrabi are doing okay. They're starting to get eaten by things. I probably should be spraying with BT now because the caterpillars are out. I just haven't started spraying anything yet, really. The broccoli rob is done. These have died back here. And these have seed pods now. The broccoli is about done. This broccoli has gone to flower. And that one too. These mustards are all done. They all have their seed pods on them. And I might just let these seed pods dry out and then just put them out in the landscape for the um, caterpillars that keep trying to eat in the garden. Oh, look at this little butterweed here. We're gonna pick you out. I don't want you growing in my garden here. Here we go. And let's see, what are you? You're in not anything I want growing in there. I do have some baby dill. That's baby dill and those other little things. I put some, I think these were the Canterbury bells. Let's see. Yeah, I planted some Canterbury, Canterbury bell seeds in October. I really hope that's what that is because those flowers look so pretty on the packet. I'll do a little weeding while I'm out here. This pineapple sage did great. This is the new stems here. Whoa, what is that? I don't know what that is, but that's interesting. I'm waiting for this tarragon seed to see if it's gonna pop up. These are two moringa trees. They look like they're doing okay. I might try to put some of these out in the landscape. We'll just see. I was excited to see this asparagus come back. You can see here, this little dead stalk. This is what I had before the freeze and it froze and died back. And then look, shoo, came on right on back. These little cells here, these are my native seeds that I had cold stratifying. I'm gonna let these grow on a little bit bigger before I try to put those out into the native bed. That's one little lone radish that looks terrible. <laughs> and there's a plastic snake to try to keep my cat from sitting in this box. She likes to sit in there. I guess that soil is nice and cool. There's a strawberry plant. Some more asparagus hiding in there. Let me show you these adorable violas. Look at how cute these are. I love the little ruffles and the colors. I planted these up in the lime tree pot. Oh, so I did, in one of my other videos, I showed you how this pot was out here in the landscape. I did go and get it and plant the lime tree up in this pot, so this pot matches this pot now. So there's our lime. So let's see, I think we covered everything. Oh, almost everything on this side. Here's some more. This is the Blue Days kale. It's looking really good. It's time for me to harvest some kale. These here are the Cosmos. Can't wait for these to flower. These are looking really good. And this one here that's flowering this is actually the cilantro. Oh, and look, look at the little ladybug. Yay, I love seeing that. I'm not sure what that little stripe one is. That one might be a bad guy. I need to learn some more about these insects. These chards are looking good.
these purple um, bok choy, they're ready to harvest. So some of them are starting to send up a little bit of a flower spike. I pulled that one out already. But these bok choys are ready. These chards are looking really nice. So that's everything on this side of the garden. Now let's come along to this side. This is the lemon tree with the wild violets planted underneath there. The lemon tree is almost finished flowering. It has just a few flowers left and they're looking old, but the bees have been all over it. I'm excited to get some lemons off of this one this year. So this side, we have our red Malabar spinach, our Katrina rose, the Peggy Martin, in the back there, I have these on the other side too. That's the Egyptian walking onions. There, there, and there. Have the wild violets as a ground cover and the bloody dock sorrel. This is more of the same on the other side. I have daylilies, agapanthus, the guara. I do have another artichoke there have the okra, the balloon flower here, okra, bachelor's buttons, the rose, more agapanthus and daylilies, and the rose of Sharon, the Althea. Oh, and a moringa tree in that pot. Let me back up. I'll show you the poppy and pepper bed. Most of these are looking really good. I topped some of these peppers. So when you top them, you come in and you cut the middle stalk, the top stalk off, and then you let it split into two like that. So I topped most of these. And this one is actually making its first pepper. Look at that. How interesting. Look at these little flowers. These are so cute. These are the poppies. So all these poppies and peppers have some more sweet alyssum tucked in the corner here. This is the beet bed. These are all beets, different kinds. I have the Shioga, I have an albino beet, and I have a golden beet. And a few more poppies down the middle. This sorrel is doing so good. This is the broadleaf sorrel. Look at that, and it has a really delicious lemony flavor. This is a, um, <laughs> this is a hollyhock that was stuck in with this sweet alyssum. So I let it grow. We're going to see how well it does. My other hollyhocks are suffering really bad from rust. Uh, so we'll see if these do any better. This is one of the climbing nasturtiums that are popping up. And these squashes are doing great. That's the red curry the sweet dumpling and I can't see the tag on that one. Delicata on that one. There's a little wild violet. I don't know what all these little seedlings popping up are. I'll wait for them to get a little bit bigger and then I'll start pulling those out. There's some nasturtium that's popping up there. This one is the small sugar pumpkin. Those two have popped up. The Seminole pumpkin has not popped up yet. I might have to put down some more seed for that one. There's some more nasturtium. And these are looking really good. These got so much bigger in the spring than they did in the winter time when I sowed them. 
these squashes are doing good. They're starting to vine out. This is the kushaw. I'm gonna let that go out that way. This is a marigold here that's popped up. This is the yellow straight neck squash. These are the zucchini here. They're starting to send out their male flowers. The male flowers are the ones that are on the long stalks like this. The female flowers are gonna be really close to the stem, like this one here. This one is a female flower. See, it's got a tiny little baby fruit on it right there. That's a female flower, so that could be my first zucchini. And then this one is the white bush squash starting to make some little flowers. Nothing formed just yet though. But these golden purslane are doing good. The leaves are really juicy. And these nasturtiums are doing well too. Okay. So there's the squash bed and squash and peppers. Let's come around to the eggplants and beans. I don't know why I always struggle with beans. I'm gonna get a soil test done, that'll help. <laughs> so those are having some discoloration. But these beans here, these are the dragon tongue and the royal burgundy bush beans. This bloody dock sorrel is looking really pretty and the other sorrel over there is doing well. And I was surprised at this. This is that watercress. I was surprised at how well it's taken off. It's really spreading and look, it's, <laughs> it's, it's making little seed stalks already. Little seed pods. See that in there? These little flowers. My eggplant, some of them are struggling. I just, I probably don't have the right varieties for my location. So I'll know for next year, I'll need to get some different eggplant varieties. This one's struggling bad. That's the Rosa Bianca. And they are getting eaten. I need to start spraying with some BT. And some neem oil too, probably. Here's my lemon. I'm gonna come around this way. This is our little strawberry pot. I do wanna do something different for the strawberries in the future that I won't have to um, dig around. I want the strawberries to hang out. Oh, look at this one. You see in there? They ripen up so quickly. I was surprised. And see this one, the, um, the slugs have got to. Look, you can even see a little slug on there. So if you ever see your <laughs> your strawberries have holes in them like that, it's the slugs. So I'm gonna need a different uh, setup for these strawberries. But fresh homegrown strawberries taste so much better than anything in the store. I was so surprised as to the difference. So that's all the strawberries in there. The plants are really pretty. But I'll get something different for these in the future. I went looking today, but didn't find anything. That was a price I was willing to pay. <laughs> have some more sweet alyssum on the front here. And this cantaloupe is, is not doing good. This is the cantaloupe. It's not doing good. Again, it's probably variety selection. I need to do a better job of selecting the varieties that are gonna grow in my humidity and temperature. That's in this climbing nasturtium there. That's the loofah, they're doing pretty good. And these are the spaghetti squash. These leaves are so prickly though. Be careful when you're touching these. See all those little spikes? They're prickly. Here are the onions and tomatoes. These tomatoes have gotten really tall. They're ready to be weaved up. And these are the onions that I planted from the sets. They're looking nice. 
And these are, this is a borage that I planted from seed. So you can see the difference from on the other side, the ones that I planted, um, that I started from seed early and then transplanted. They're, they are much farther along than the ones that I planted from seed. Which is not unexpected, but um, I'm glad to see that the ones that I transplanted did survive so well. I was worried that since they need a lot of water in the beginning at least, um, I was worried that they weren't going to transplant well. These tomatoes are looking good. And you can see we had about four inches of rain this past week. These are some more borage. And here's a wild violet that's stuck in there. Over here, this is a Tulsi. This is the holy basil. It's doing well. Look at how cute those Johnny jump ups are. I'm so glad I planted those in here. These are the Egyptian walk-in onions. These are doing great. This is the bloody dock sorrel. Oh, and this is the dandelion, the French dandelion. I'm glad to have a few leaves of those in my diet here and there. They're so nutritious for you. This is the strawberry spinach. Look at how lush and beautiful this has gotten. I'm, I'm surprised. It's, it's really a pretty plant. Let me taste this one, because last time I tasted it, it tasted really grassy. Mm, it's actually a bit better right now than it did or than it tasted in the fall. It's not as grassy tasting. Um, kind of, it really tastes more like a really mild watercress. Hmm, I actually will eat this now. I'm surprised it tastes so much different in the spring. Be better different, not just different. <laughs> I love these little Johnny jump ups. That's the oregano down there in the corner. Look at this tomato. I'm loving it. I'm loving it on this little obelisk. Look at how beautiful the arugula flowers are. And the flowers, I have tasted them, they taste just like the arugula. Oh, and look, one of my spring onions is starting to uh, make a bloom. How cute. This chard is doing great. This kale, too, is doing phenomenal. It's time to harvest some of that. That's another beet down there. And the spinach. Look at how large the spinach has gotten. It's time to harvest. Oh, look, this one is starting to send up its flower stalk. This is that, um, that wasabi mustard. So I'm going to need to harvest this one. The lettuce too, the freckles lettuce, it's so beautiful, but it's starting to send up its flower spike. You can see how it's making that long stalk. It's time to harvest all of this as well. These lettuces are looking great. The romaine too, it's sending up its flower spike. And it is pretty warm out here today. It's 80 something. These are struggling. I have been finding some slugs on them. This is a chrysanthemum, I believe. Yeah, the Tong Ho. I have to start spraying these. Let's see, what is in here? I see a kale, oh, and lemon balm. Kale and lemon balm in this one. That's another Moringa tree and Sweet Alyssum. And some cosmos. This is a watercress right here that I got from the store, like the grocery store. It was marketed as the live watercress and it came with the little root ball. And so I planted it up and it survived all winter and now sending out these cute little yellow flowers. That was nice to have just a little bit. I don't like things too spicy, so I don't plant too much of that. This kale is looking really good. Okay, so I think we went all around. 
Oh, let me show you these two. This is a mystery. I'm not sure what that is. I had to pull all the lettuces here. They were getting eaten up by aphids. So I pulled them and I left some of the leaves there. I know I'm bad. I should have got that picked up. This is a little miniature hydrangea. I see some little buds popping up on it. And I just went to <laughs> one of our local high schools had their Future Farmers of America sale today. So I picked up these Dusty Millers to support their program. They're actually looking a little bit wilted. I'm gonna push them into the shade. Okay, got those in the shade. So let's look around. This is all of the Potager garden. I've showed you all of this. So now let's see, should we go left or should we go right? Let's go left. I'll show you what I've been doing out here in the yard. Oh, this is, <laughs> this is an adorable little bird bath that my daughter and I saw when we were out. We just couldn't help but pick it up. <laughs> so I'm working on this mulch pathway. I want this mulch to go all the way out to the street and I want mulch, mulch pathways to come around this way and go all the way out to here where we can go in the backyard and a mulch pathway to come all the way out here to come and look at these other gardens because our yard does hold some water as I'll show you. This ground here is still pretty wet. It's not holding water at this point, but it's still pretty wet. Let's look at this area first and see what is going on. This is very wet. Oh, look, let me show you this here. I'm excited about this. This, this is a flower that fell. This is a cross vine. It's one of our native vines here in Louisiana. I'm gonna use this when I do my native certification. It's growing up this sycamore tree here. So this vine here, most of the flowers have fallen, but that's the cross vine growing up that sycamore. Well, let's see what we have in here. Uh, oh, I'm surprised these lived. These are some cana lilies. I just knew they were going to die with the 16 degree weather we had. But I see them there and there and all around. Awesome, they survived. These sedges, one day I'll get in here and pull out these sedges and kind of weed in here. This here, this one, this little spiky plant, this is one of our wild dewberry, wild blackberries. The berries grow on the second year canes. So since this is a first year cane, this is a primocane, this will not actually make any fruit for us. And this is a oak or pecan tree. That's gotta get pulled up. I don't want another tree right there. I don't see any of my hidden lilies popping up just yet. No, not yet. But it's the cana lilies you can see here. They did survive. <gasps> Look at this big snake right here, y'all. Wow. Y'all see him? I think that's a rat snake. I'm gonna have to get confirmation based on the pattern. It's not one of our venomous ones. Wow, he's a beauty. Let me see if I can get any bigger. Let me get some pictures so I can send it to the snake identification site for Louisiana. Awesome. What a beauty, he's just chilling. He looks like he ate something too. Let's see what else we have around here. We have some liar leaf sage here. That's one of our natives. Can you believe the banana tree survived? How about that? The banana survived. Let's come around this way. This is the Chefalera that I had planted prior to the freeze. I don't know if anything's going to come back from this one, but if you look at the top, 
It's very dark, but the bottom looks looks pretty good actually. Oh, no, it's soggy. So this one probably died. I'm gonna give it probably till the summertime to see if anything's gonna sprout up from the bottom. And um, if not, this one will just get cut down. I'm gonna come around this way. I love these clovers. <laughs> so over here by this tree, I'm being careful where I walk, because I know the snakes are out. So I moved these fleabane. These are some native wildflowers. These are called fleabane. Right there. I moved those there, kind of wanted to keep them. This is so cute. It's a very thin vetch. Um, I, I think this one is native. I'm not 100%. They do have an introduced vetch variety, but I think that one is thicker in stalk and leaves and the flowers are thicker. So I think this one is a native vetch and I have some native lyre leaf sage there. And here I have some native wild geraniums. Now I just transplanted these yesterday, so they are looking a little sad. They need some good water. Uh, and then I put down a lot of seeds. I have some echinacea around here, some yarrow, bee balm. I put a lot of seeds down. So once these start flowering, we'll talk more about what all we have growing in here. I'm trying to keep an eye on where I'm stepping. If you look this way, where you see this wood here in this triangle right here, I identified that as the lowest area of our property in the front yard. Uh, before we started having these, the, uh, all of these rains, we already had some water puddle there. So I'm trying to identify the best sites for the rain garden. If we come around this way, I'll show you what I've been up to. Oh, this is our burn pile. You know, we just put bricks around. That's where we bring, we have a lot of extra material that we are not able to utilize. We burn it there. And let me show you what we've been doing over here. This is our lemongrass. It survived the freeze. It's popping up. I can't wait to enjoy some lemongrass. <laughs> some lemongrass. Okay, here, these need some water. Um, they're looking really sad. I can't believe they would need water. These are some, these are the extra cucumbers. And they didn't look like this yesterday, but it's really hot today. So that, I think that's affecting a lot of the vegetables. Let me come over and get this one picked up. Let me just hook them around here. So these are all of my extra cucumbers. I just got this trellis off of Amazon. It's just one of those. I just hooked it around some of the fence posts like that. I'm surprised these look so bad. Oh well, this was a learning experience to see if this would work. But look, we do have some little baby cucumbers <laughs> on there. They can survive. Let me pick this one up too. And all these bricks, y'all. <laughs> when I was out here working, I thought I was gonna come and plant some stuff here. And I started digging. And I found that the previous owners of this house had a stack of bricks that just worked their way down deep, deep into the ground. So all of these bricks were buried. Almost all of them were buried. And I dug them all up so that I can plant there. This is an established crepe myrtle. I'm gonna leave it. If you try to cut up a crepe myrtle, you'll likely get a lot of suckers that pop up all over where the roots were. And so it's just better just to leave it. These are some roses. I need to figure out where I'm going to put these exactly. These are some rose cuttings that I took. And let me show you over here. This is some swamp milkweed that I sowed last year and is coming back up. I'm excited for our butterfly garden. 
And this one's looking kind of sad. I just planted this one this week. This is a Maypop. It's one of the plants that I've been looking to get. I'm so excited to have it. I just can't wait for it to bounce back. And I wish they had a really nice flower open to show you, but they don't have one open right now. They're a really unique flower. And this is what I was talking about, the rust on the hollyhocks. They're looking terrible. But, you know, because I'm learning about all these different plants as we go. This is a really pretty rose. Let's see if I can get closer. Look at that. I hope the color comes through. It's kind of a peachy, there we go. The peachy color. It's really pretty. And you can see down here, I anticipated planting some um, squashes and stuff down on this um, fence, putting the trellis down here. It holds a lot of water back there, so I might have to rethink that plan, or I might have to raise them up some kind with a, a little raised bed of some wood. So let's see how, whew, look at all of this water where our sunflower seeds were planted. I don't know if these are gonna make it. I'm glad I have extra sunflower seeds though. Let's look at all of that water. That might be a fail. <laughs> but there's our mulch pile. Continuously using that. And y'all, if you have a mulch pile, you need a pitchfork like that. That's actually a manure fork. And it is so much easier to work with than a shovel. <laughs> Okay, so this is this end of the property. I do have some irises there. Um, that rubber plant here. I'm not going to walk through here because it's all muddy. That rubber plant there, it might have died as well. I do see some more little vetch over there. I want some more dewberries, but again, this is all mud. So I'm not going to walk over there. So that's this end of the property. So now we're gonna head back and go to the other side where the orchard is. And I want to make mulch pathways for the most commonly traveled area, uh, most commonly traveled pathways, just because it's easier to see snakes. As you can see, we need to see where the snakes are. This probably looks very different from the last time you've seen it. I had all those extra squash plants so I played to those here and I covered all of this area right here with mulch. The pomegranate is looking really nice. Last week, one of the other high schools had their Future Farmers of America sale. So I picked up all these little guys here from them. And this is a Texas sage. This is a native plant to Texas and I just thought it was so beautiful and those little flowers were so beautiful. I had to pick that up. This one is a, is a native azalea. It's so pretty. It almost looks like honeysuckle. It's still in a pot. I haven't figured out where exactly I'm gonna put that one yet. The blackberry is looking great. The raspberry is doing okay. It has some damage, but the new growth is looking okay. And here's some more of the little squashes. That one actually looks like a female flower right there. One of the other things I did was I planted up all of my extra tomatoes along here and I put one of those trellis nettings. So I have all of my extra tomatoes all the way down there. I filled in all of this area with mulch, except for this here where the blueberries are because I'm not sure what the soil test is going to show. I might have to raise these blueberries up and put them in a, a raised bed to give them some more acidic, well-draining soil to have them do better, do better. So most of these tomatoes are looking okay. They are struggling a little bit with the heat today. They're a little bit floppy, but I think they're going to be okay. There's a lot of moisture in the soil. So here's one of our experiments. So 
thank you for joining me all around the front yard, including seeing the snake. It's not a venomous one. Um, so thanks for coming around all the front yard. We got to see all of the Potager garden and we got to see all of what I've been working on, all of the experiments, and we'll see what survives and what doesn't. And thank you for joining. Bye. Make sure to subscribe for the little kitty. Meow. Hey guys, so I'm back. I heard back from my herpology friends. And you can see here, here is our snake. This is one of the rat snakes that we have that live in our area. Remember these guys eat rodents, so they're good guys for our garden. This is not venomous. It's probably close to three feet long, probably two and a half, three feet long. And if you weren't familiar with the, um, with the markings on its back, you might be concerned that this could be um, a water moccasin because of the line, the black line between his nose and going to his eye. Um, but that's not the markings of the water moccasin on his back. So this is just one of our resident rat snakes. He's a good guy for the garden. He keeps the mice at bay. So if you see him out, just tell him, hey, don't try to kill him.